Well, welcome out to Winton Raceway for the third round of the Australian Super Truck Series. Terry Nightingale already two in the bank, and this one is shaping up to be a thriller. Yeah, thanks, Boydo. Great to see the Super Trucks back in rural Victoria at the action track. Winton Motor Raceway, and this one's going to be an absolute ripper. And it's good to see Bo Hewitt back once again. The reigning champion, the 2012 Super Truck champion. And let's see what he can do with the big number one on the side of his truck. Well, if you haven't seen truck racing before, strap yourself in. We're about to go for race three. Championship leader Steve Zaman has dominated the 2013 season in his appropriately named Purple People Eater after becoming both Trans-Tasman and New Zealand champ. Zabbitt wants to add another statue to his mantle by taking the Aussie Super Truck Championship. So far this season has been fantastic for us. We've uh, won the first two race meetings and uh, we're looking pretty good and uh, confident for today. Well this year we've got a new uh, way we're running our points and uh, all trucks are liable to run the number one. So um, as it stands now Stevie Calder is the closest one to me and um, I can tell you he will put on a good fight all weekend so it's going to be an arbiter. The young Bo Hewitt is defending champion uh, at the moment and he's brought his truck back out. He hasn't attended the first two but um, it's great to see him here. His truck's right on the pace and uh, he's uh, definitely given us a good hurry up. Stevie Calder down the end and the, uh, the giant killer uh, was on my heels the whole way around and um, he's definitely given me a good hurry up but I can assure you uh, this weekend we're going to try and uh, keep our running streak going. Um, we've got we've got eight race meetings in a row if we win today, so it's um, it's a pretty pretty special thing for us. The truck's going really well. The um, the, the the trucks the trucks come together after the last meeting. We haven't touched a thing on it. We've pulled it straight back out of here, straight back down the low 16s. We haven't hit the 15s this meeting. The track's a little bit a little bit off than last meeting, but um, I'm pretty sure we're going to put on a good show and and uh, keep the truck up the front. We've got two reverse grid races to go and um, we're going to start from the back, so it's going to be exciting. Um, hopefully we can all get through unscathed. It's pretty special this year, we went to New Zealand and we contested the New Zealand Championship again and we won it back to back. Uh, we won all five race meetings over there and um, to do two in the same calendar year will be a first for anybody. So for the history and the team, um, I've got pretty, pretty big weight on my shoulders this weekend. Race three, reverse grid race, and that will mean that the guy who finished first in the last race will now start from the back row of the grid. It makes the racing closer and a lot more exciting, as if super truck racing couldn't get any more exciting anyway. Under pace car conditions at the moment as they get set to fire into the third race of the weekend. These awesome machines with plenty of horsepower. Let's check out your grid to see the way they line up. Fletcher Christian on pole in our B-class competitor. Anderson, Yardi, Tynan, Amoroso, Coulter. Then we've got Hewitt and Steve Zamet rounding out the eight. Well, <laughs> the fast guys at the back, the slow guys at the front, the Isuzu's in the mix. Get set, we're about to go. Yeah, and Witten certainly isn't the widest track as it is anyway, but let's see what these guys can do from the back of the grid as we get the green light. And away they go, flying in the turn one for the first time. Coulter's in the dirt, but here comes Tynan up the inside of Christian, and he spins him out, he's around. And there goes Anderson White as well. Yard is involved, there's about five of them involved. An absolute carnage already. Hewitt trying to thread the needle, the door's shutting. Oh, he backed out of that in the Kenworth at exactly the right time, trying to avoid all the trucks that were spinning left and spinning right, and has been able to make up a few spots, albeit at a slower pace than he would normally do. <laughs> That's exactly right. And have a look at Emeroso. He runs wide at the sweeper, the most exciting man in super truck racing. And have a look at the dirt that he's flicked back up to the uh, the windscreen. And Steve Zemmett's car and Emeroso's off the circuit. He is off the circuit. It looks like his day is done. Well, what a shame for Frank. He got to the pointy end of the field, but it all got ugly for him in the sweeper. Run a little bit wide, maybe overcorrected, or perhaps uh, as a result of tagging somebody, maybe there's a mechanical issue with that truck. He's been a long-time competitor in this sport and a shame for him to be out on the first lap. Yeah, look at Bo Hewitt. He started from the back row of the grid now and as he has a, has a look up the inside of Brett Tynan in the turn number eight and it looks like he'll go up in the third position. Very smooth too, nice and clean through that section of the track. Just a bit of understeer, forces him a little bit wide, has to correct, he'll lose a little bit of time but he's got the Isuzu up in front of him that he's trying to hunt down at the moment being steered by Kevin Anderson. Safety car is out, safety car out on the track and that's why Amoroso, yeah you can see mechanical damage, uh, left front 
flat by the looks of that. Let's see how it happened. Yeah, well, Brett Tynan comes down the inside. A little bit naughty from him. I thought that was a little bit ambitious. And poor old Frankie Amoroso cleans up Fletcher Christian there. As you can see, through turn number one, bang, and there's the damage. But uh, great driving from the rest of the trucks to get around that one. Getting the front end of a car off the tracks, one thing. Doing it in a truck, that's a completely <laughs> different kettle of fish. Back under green flag racing conditions. The Isuzu leading at the moment. One of the super pocket rockets, but I tell you what, it won't be long before the big guys start charging their way through. Yeah, here comes Bo Hewitt, and of course, uh, Bo is driving one of the uh, 2006 Kenworth T904, 12.7 litre, the capacity, and now he's all over the back of one of the car, car trailer vehicles of uh, number eight, and that, of course, is Craig Yardy. So, good drive from uh, Craig Yardy, and of course, Kevin Anderson, both T marks from uh, Nambucca Heads. A uh, population of 6,000 there, so they certainly breed them well. I love the, uh, the name of Hewitt's team, Schizo Racing. One, <laughs> because maybe he drives like that, and that's what he's trying to put forward to his opposition. Don't overtake me, I'm Schizo. Or, to be a truck racer, you have to be Schizo. <laughs> oh, you certainly do. They're a lot different to uh, to drive than a car, and these guys do a very, very good job to steer them the way they do. Now, this is what's great about truck racing. We've got the C-Class trucks of the Isuzus, which are around six to 700 horsepower, weighing about three and a half ton to the big 12.7 litre of uh, Bo Hewitt's big Kenworth. And uh, it weighs about five and a half tonne and has around 1,400 horsepower. So you can see the difference and the uh, smaller trucks are a lot better through the twisty tight stuff around the back. And it's amazing, particularly as we watch Hewitt's Kenworth at the moment, how little body roll there is. In the early days of oh. truck racing here in Australia, drivers would literally drop their uh, loads off in, in the paddock at Oran Park and go racing originally. It's come so much further down the track and evolved in so many ways since then. These are pure racing trucks that are designed not to haul loads, but to go out there and race alongside each other, not dissimilar to what we have in Europe. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, these things have been built up from the ground. I mean, once upon a time, they would have been work trucks, but they've been completely stripped out, completely overhauled, and to turn into these uh, super quick monsters. Now, these trucks, these, uh, these things do about the same sort of lap times as HQ Holden. So you can see that they certainly get up along and boogie. And Steve Coulter, of course, has been a long-time campaigner in HQs. On board Steve Zammett, on board his Kenworth. T401. Zamet's been around for some time too in this category and, and has really enjoyed himself and he's poked his head up in a few other circles too, it must be added. Yeah, he certainly has and uh, it's actually Steve Zamet and Steve Coulter fighting out the championship for the 2013 Super Truck Championship. So he's got to try and get up as far as he can and get as many points as he can as he has a look up the inside of the Tank World truck. How evenly matched are those two? Oh yeah, definitely in a straight line and you can see Zemmett wanted to uh, try and sneak his nose up the inside but pulled out of it right at the last minute. The interesting thing about uh, trucks is when you get the tail out and you lose a, a little bit of control, instead of what you do in a car where you get off the accelerator and allow the car to come back in a truck, if you do that you're on the risk of rolling it. So the best thing to do is to stand flat out on the gas and let it spin up, which always makes it very spectacular for all the punters up on the hill. Jim is, you know, I, what I remember when I was a 16 year old kid, we used to go to Oran Park and watch the uh, the super trucks there and one of my fondest memories of motorsport was seeing some of these guys come out of turn uh, turn 10 i think it was the beefy corner absolutely full lock sideways and they uh, certainly haven't changed any in that respect zamet still trying to work his way forward but being evenly matched at the moment by the truck sitting just in front of him he's closest up under brakes but as you're saying a few moments ago under horsepower they're so evenly matched there's nothing between the two and Zamet just can't get the run he needs. You can see he's weaving from side to side, trying to make it happen. And while Zemmett stuck up behind Tynan, look who's right behind him. The man who Zemmett's battling for the championship, Steve Coulter. He's going to be all over the back of Zemmett now, as uh, I think that was Anderson brings up the dust, but Zemmett up the inside of Tynan again, can't get it done. Tynan denies yet again almost a carbon copy of the previous lap. He's very, very good in a straight line as that truck. And have a look at Bo Hewitt, he's out in front by a mile and I think it's going to be pretty difficult for anyone to beat him at the moment as Zemmett runs wide through turn number 10. They're yeah, starting to get a little bit impatient and trying to use as much of the track as he can to get a, some sort of slipstream effect to get past uh, Tynan who's doing a great job and, and doing nothing wrong it must be said. He's driving very, very clean at the moment. See, Zamet gets really good drive out of the turns, but just can't make it happen. And with the Isuzu of the number 12 up in front of Kevin Anderson, this brings in a whole new equation for these two to think about.
out. Yeah, well, luckily for Kevin Anderson that uh, they're coming around to the cleavage section of the circuit now, and that should be a lot easier for him to negotiate those turns in the big five and a half ton, 1400 horsepower trucks of Tyne and Zemet and Coulter's back there as well. I noticed you said it was easier for him to negotiate <laughs> this section of the track rather than get out of the way because in truck racing, it's fight for every position you can. It certainly is. There's Benny and Fennel rubbing his Kevin. <laughs> oh, oh, look at that. Tynan right up behind him. He really wants to try and get up there in the third position, doesn't he? But he's got to be careful because Zemmett's behind him as well. How scary is this? Anderson stays wide and they go. Tynan goes past and Zemmett can't get past by the time they come down into this turn complex. So that's got to be costly. Costly, look at that. Tail hanging out as the checkered flag comes out. And Bo Hewitt, Schizo Racing, have taken victory in the third race of the weekend. Yeah, well, that was a very, very close one. Very, very exciting. Oh, Steve Zem has pulled off the circuit. He's lost it after the checkered flag. So not too sure what the issue there was. But, well, I think he's just overcooked it over the, uh, the finish line. But no harm done. But great drive for Bo Hewitt. He's taken the victory over Yardi. A great job for him and the first of the Isuzu's home. And Brett Tynan holding on for third spot. White trucker Steve Coulter has arrived at Winton leading the three-ton class. This weekend he's co-driving with his son and he's ready to clash with the six-ton trucking titans of Steve Zammett and Bo Hewitt. We're going super. We're running second outright in the championship. First time the light trucks have been included in the outright championship. Uh, we've won seven Australian titles in the light trucks and uh, this year we're, we're on a winner. We just want to uh, take this main championship out of the way. Steve Zammett's our main contender. Um, but the whole crew's worked unbelievable all weekend. Steve's, um, he's around about six tonne at about 1,200 horsepower. Um, we run three tonne at 650 horsepower, uh, full V8 supercar brakes. Um, so power to weight ratio, this track really suits us, except for a couple of straights, but um, we've been the fastest uh, truck in each session, fastest qualifier, we got pole yesterday. So today's race is gonna be fantastic. Taking on the six-ton Bohemus is no easy task, but with Coulter's fast experience in the three-ton league and the support of his crew, the Isuzu driver has become a powerful force in these David and Goliath battles. I only wish I had a six-ton Isuzu because, you know, it would be fantastic because we could we could probably punt these guys, you know. And we, but at the moment, we just, um, we're doing what we can. We're staying out of trouble. And um, obviously, Steve won the New Zealand Championship and his ultimate goal was to, to win the Australian Championship. And obviously, our goal was to win the Australian Championship outright and be first light truck again. So uh, that's our goal this year. And uh, we're certain that we're going to continue to develop this truck and be quicker and quicker. And these big guys better watch out. He's not just a nice guy, but a very, very capable pilot in a variety of different machinery too, it has to be said. HQ racing, truck racing, anything he can get his hands on, and he adapts himself very, very quickly. Speaking of adapting, it's time for the Super Pre. Ten laps, off pole position, Fletcher Christian, and as you can see, a great mix of Isuzu's super trucks in there as well, and Steve Zammett and Bo Hewitt are going to be very, very tough in this race. Zammett had issues and couldn't get into the top three in the third race of the weekend. What can he do in the Super Pre? And here they go. Christian with a great start, but tying it up the inside to go into the lead early. Great drive from him. And have a look at Hewitt starting again near the back row of the grid, already up in the third place. And he was the man to beat in the last one, setting the fastest lap of the race with a 117-0. Zammett had the door shut on him in turn one. You can see right in the mix of this three-way battle at the moment, Fletch up in front of him and a good overtaking manoeuvre around the outside by uh, our number one car, of, uh, number one truck of Schizo Racing's Bo Hewitt as he charges his way forward early on this opening lap. Yeah, well, they go to 12.7 litre Kenworth, but have a look at Zammett up the inside of Christian. They're gonna go side by side and they touch. There's paint rubbing big time there as Christian runs wide into the dirt, but great driving from Stevie Zemmett to get up in, uh, to get himself up into a podium position. An awesome of Fletch to be able to hold on there on the outside, which was hopefully for him going to become the inside, but uh, Zemmett decided no, shut the door and gave him a bit of a hip and shoulder for good measure. So Bo Hewitt fancies a look at the lead, but remembering 10 laps is a journey, so plenty of time to do it. Hewitt knows he's got the pace. He's just going to wait till uh, he finds the right place. 
wait until he finds the right place or make the right place. Goes to the inside, oh. gets the overtaking manoeuvre done with a bit of push and shove. And this time, Zamet's able to get past Tynan as he's upsetting the flow. Now these two, this is what we wanted to see. The heavyweight title fight. Steve Zamet, Bo Hewitt, nose to tail, with Hewitt out in front at the moment and plenty of laps to go. Gentlemen, this is going to be a Grand Prix. So Hewitt's going to have one eye in the mirror and one eye out the windscreen at the moment as Zemet now really applies the pressure as they make their way through the sweeper. So here's a replay. Christian just went a little bit wide, but Zemet pushed him out there, and that was sort of all she wrote. And uh, Christian doing a great job to stay on the track. And he was the pass to the lead. Last lap around, Bo Hewitt around the outside of Brett Tyne and then makes his way down the inside through turn number 10. He's getting great traction, isn't he, Hewitt, out of that beast of his? Really clean. Zemet gets tail happy, sitting back there in second, trying to bridge this gap to our race leader. The great thing about Zemet, he's leaving nothing in the garage. Is he throwing it all on the line in this Super Prix? Well, Boyder, you just mentioned on how smooth that Bo Hewitt was driving. That's exactly what you have to do. Just that small sideways moment there from Stevie Zemmett. And have a look at the time that he's lost. He's really fallen back into the grips of Brett Tynan now. As Craig Yardy and one of the Isuzus tries to go up the inside of the sideways Fletcher Christian. But goes to the outside now. This is going to be tight, Boydo, in the turn one. Yeah, well, Fletcher uh, Christian trying to protect the inside line there. Has been able to achieve that goal after that one little mistake coming onto the start finish straight but at the moment you can see the Isuzu just climbs all over him through the tight twisty sections of this track this is what we love about truck racing big powerful very very heavy trucks up against the light nimble fast Isuzus yeah the, the two car and car trailer uh, entries from Nambucker are trying their hardest to get past Christian but he's doing a great job to hold them off and another thing we should probably mention too the tyres the Isuzus actually use uh, a buffed out continental road tyre where the bigger trucks are actually uh, using a proper uh, a Goodyear race tyre from Luxembourg, believe it or not. So uh, a little bit different between uh, all the classes, but that's what makes the racing so close. As you can see now, Fletcher Christian holding on for dear life. Imagine going to a tyre manufacturer. We'd like you to make our tr our racing tyre. Sure, what are you driving? Trucks. Okay. <laughs> I've got a Kenworth, mate. <laughs> Yardy, oh, slows and loses a spot as he makes his way down through this final S's to come up onto the start finish straight. Even the Isuzus are very tail happy today as well. Yeah, the Isuzus are very light in the rear. That's uh, one of the reasons why they had that big rear wing is to try and keep power to the ground. But gee whiz, haven't we got a great view in the front of Craig Yardy's car is Anderson up the inside of Christian. They're going to go three wide. Yardy off into the dirt. Unfortunately, just run out of brakes, I dare say. And his SBR has been able to maintain forward momentum. It will rejoin the track, but a long way off that battle. And out in front, Bo Hewitt, Schizo Racing, the Kenworth, the 12.7 litre. And isn't he doing a great job? The Arlen Pennells truck, the Coburg Truck Parks uh, sponsored vehicle. And there's Zemmett. Trying his hardest, he's driven a great race, but just can't, uh, has not got the pace, rather, that Bo Hewitt has got. Yeah, and certainly the, the truck doesn't look as smooth on the road either. That's the, the telling factor, as we pointed out a couple of times. Hewitt's truck is just almost, you know, driving at about 90% of what it's capable of doing, where Zamet's got it all hanging out at the moment, showing how good he is as a pilot of one of these things, but unfortunately it's not the fastest way around comparatively to our race leader. Exactly right. And I mean, second place is a good result for Zemet. That's if uh, that is how they finish up because he's just trying to get championship points. He, he wants to go in there and fight Coulter for the 2013 Super Truck Championship. And certainly that more valuable points for taking out first would be an absolute peach for him. But as you say, he may have to settle at this stage for a second because Hewitt just looks absolutely dominant. Look at this. What you struck through this section of the, the track where you're probably able to get the most amount of wheel spin and rear slide, but it's just almost like it's on rails. And especially with the turbo boost as well. I mean, the thing about a turbo, Grant, as you know, uh, the power comes on like a hand grenade. So he's got to be very, very easy on the throttle as he makes, uh, as he comes out of the exit for some of these corners because he'll find himself facing the wrong way very quick. Love the onboard shot from Steve Zaman's truck. Gives you a great idea of what truck racing is all about and how high off the ground you are. 
gives you a perfect opportunity to see so much of the track, though. That's the beautiful thing about it. And these two have just cleared out from the rest of the pack like they're in a race of their own. Well, have a look at the gap between Zemet and Tynan. He's all the way, probably half a lap behind him as Bo Hewitt now. Last lap of the race, he's driven absolutely perfectly as he makes his way through the sweeper for the last time into the cleavage section. And all he has to do now is keep his mindset on the job, keep the thing on the black stuff, and he may come away with a win. He's able to hold a beautiful tight line through that sweeper too, which is a, a bit of an art here at Winton Raceway. It's very much a driver's racetrack in so far as there's one racing line, which is the quick way around, and if you're not on it, you're going to lose time. But Hewitt's made this made this race absolutely his own. He's been dominant from the start. He's done nothing silly. Still got a reasonably straight truck. Now he's having a bit of fun, though, lighting up the rears because he knows just one more turn complex to negotiate, and the chequered flag will be his. Yep, turns 8, 9 and 10 for the last time. Gee whiz, we nearly put the commentary's mocker on him then, didn't we, Boydo? As he comes through turn number 9, and let's see if he gives the crowd a big slide. And on the power, <laughs> yes, he does. Sideways for Bo Hewitt and wins the Super Prix. Takes the victory in style. A great steer by Zamet. He'll finish in second spot. Then there's going to be an absolute mile of real estate all the way back to third. And there he is at the moment. Tynan, who had a great battle in the third race of the weekend, and he'll have to settle for third here. He tries to light up the rears too as he comes onto the start finish straight to round out our podium. Yeah, so Tynan, great job from him, but it was Bo Hewitt who come away with the Super Prix from Steve Zemmett, Brett Tynan in third position, Steve Coulter, Kevin Anderson, Fletcher Christian, Craig Yardy, and Frankie Amoroso. let's take a look at the highlights of the Invitational and if you are trying to find a sentence to describe this it's no place for the faint-hearted as Frank Amoroso went down into turn one carrying way too much speed ran wide that caused a Constantina effect right behind him and that man Hewitt had it all to do again and there's Amoroso again the wild man of super truck racing absolutely hanging the tail out and Emma Rosso again. Gee whiz, it'll be difficult to make a highlight package without this man in the race, wouldn't it? He does a great job, and Fletcher Christian and himself went side by side out of 10, but it was uh, Emma Rosso who got the position, and Coulter, who goes ducking to the inside, then the outside, trying to get past the bigger truck of Christian. Yeah, there was plenty for Christian to do out there this weekend. He had Coulter on the inside. He he's able to get past this time round, but push and shove between these two. Watch what's about to happen here, coming up into the braking area. Well, the big boy putting out the shoulder. Yeah, that's right. Fletcher Christian, probably the hardest man to try and get past in super truck racing. But look at Bo Hewitt in a world of his own and sideways again. You've got all day, mate. And he does it with ease. The four lapper takes it out from Bo Hewitt. He's certainly the hardest man to beat in super truck racing as the rest of the field came down across the line. And Fletch absolutely side was having a lot of fun out there in the invitational sprint. Yeah, no, it turned out to be a good weekend. A um, few hiccups at the start, as I said. Um, yeah, um, Zamet, that's what I come here for. Um, but it seemed like I took the whole weekend away, so it's been good. The truck, truck likes a 10 lappers. It's got good brakes and, and it handles it quite well. So, But uh, they just had a little bit extra pace on us this weekend. But um, we're in it for the long haul and we want that number one at the end of the year. So a little bit conservative, didn't want to risk anything. We need to finish every single race. Yeah, we're really happy with the result. Keeps the points ticking over in the championship. And uh, yeah, fantastic day, great crowd. And uh, for Trevor Page Racing, we've, uh, we've done it again. We've done, we've done a really good job. And all the boys, can't thank all the boys, so fantastic. Well, it's turned out to be a fascinating weekend, Terry, and still plenty to fight for. There certainly is, Boydo. It'll go right down to the wire with Steve Coulter and Steve Zemmett. The battle between the big Class A Kenworth and the Class C is Zuzu. Well, Terry, thank you very much for your company. And at home, thank you too. Hope you've enjoyed all of the action from the super trucks here at Winton Raceway. We'll look forward to catching up with you next time. Bye for now. Flying in the turn one for the first time. Here comes Tynan. Up the inside of Christian and he spins him out. He's around. And there goes the Anderson White as well. Guard is involved. There's about five from involved. And absolute carnage already. And have a little seven up the inside of Christian. They're going to go side by side and they punch. There's pain rubbing in big time there as Christian runs wide. Up the inside of Christian. They're going to go three wide. Guard is off into the turn. And let's see if he gives the crowd a big slide.
slide. And on the tower, yes, he does sideways for Mo Hewitt and wins the Super 3. There's more to come after the break as we wind back to the opening round of the 2005 Australian Speedway Solo Championship from Gosford Speedway.